crazy world that we're living in now. In fact, did you see another day is a blessing. Amen. Amen. We do give honor to the Spirit of Christ. We do thank God for His love and kindness. We thank Him much for His grace and mercy. Thank you. We thank God for divine revelation of who He is. And that's important to know who God is. Amen. And that's some of the shape the world is in because they don't know who God is. Amen. We thank him for how he came into the world and ministered the gospel himself, revealing himself to the apostles. We thank him that he revealed himself in the times of old to the prophets. And we are grateful that he continues to minister to us even now by the Holy Ghost. It is written, St. John 4, 24, the Bible said that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. A lie came free. Amen. And people would rather a lie than the truth. Amen. Man loves to be lied to. Amen. They will fight you tooth and nail when you tell the truth. Amen. But I don't have a choice in the matter. For Paul admonished Timothy, you know, Paul told Timothy to preach the word, to be instant, in season, out of season. You know, whether, whether they will hear you or not, just preach the word. And that's what we endeavor to do on this morning. We're going to preach the word. Would like to invite your attention to uh, the uh, book of John, Saint John, Saint John, uh, the eighth chapter of Saint John. St. John chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. St. John chapter 8 and at verse 1. I, I tell you what, before we get St. John, let me get 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we'll pick up verse 9. And then we'll go to St. John chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, at verse 9. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, and the Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, be not deceived. So don't let nobody fool you. And the devil is doing a good job of deceiving people to think that somehow they're going to make it in despite what the word of God says. Amen. Well, the word is settled in heaven, so man can come along and say whatever he wants to say. The word trumps any idea that a man has. So the Bible says here, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Okay, and then he says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you fit in any of those categories, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it is popular teaching now that once you're saved, you're always saved. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. Because the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. <clears throat> Got a lot of homemade theology out there now. A lot of stuff that you can't find in the scriptures that folks just readily accept as truth. Look at verse 11, and, and the Bible says, And such were some of you, not such are some of you. Such were some of you. Okay, watch this. But ye are washed, ye are sanctified, and but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. God give you his spirit. He clean you up from all of that mess. Don't let nobody fool you. You see, they're, they're having this, this homosexual debate now, and, and, and people are responding to say, well, uh, uh, you can't judge me because I sin different from you. A sinner going to hell. You know, another homemade scripture. We are all sinners saved by grace. That's a lie. A sinner not saved. A sinner is one who practices sin. Okay, now I go to go to uh, Saint John, chapter eight. Saint John, chapter eight, and that verse one. I want to just debunk one of these. They, they try to go to the scripture, but and, and and use this to justify sin, but you can't do it. See, you stop reading too soon, and I'm gonna show you that. Saint John, chapter eight, and that verse one in the Bible says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. <clears throat> and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay. okay, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? What, what you say, Jesus? <clears throat> this they said, tempting him that, he, that they might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down and with his fingers wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. He didn't even pay them any attention. Because he know that they are twisting the law. And I would encourage you this morning to ignore a lot of these big time preachers because they are twisting the scriptures. All right. Amen. Just do what would Jesus do when a preacher up twisting the scripture? He wouldn't pay him any attention. Okay, verse 7 now, and the Bible says, So when they uh, continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And see, see this, right? This is where, folks, you, I, I, see, I don't know how much times I've seen this on Facebook. He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Well, see, you stop reading. See, see you stop reading. He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone at her. Okay, let's read on though. No. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted of their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even to, unto the least. 
and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I. See, this is what you missed. When you stopped at verse 7, you should have kept reading. Okay, now watch this. Now watch this. He said, Verse 11, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Watch this. Go and sin no more. Alright. Go. No, no, go and do the best you can and try not to sin. Because we all sinners. Hmm. That, okay. that ain't, and don't they say that? No. Just go and do the best you can because you can't help but to sin. See it? No. It, it don't, it don't, oh, it's a, nah, he said, neither do I go and sin no more. So now all you little, no, you cast the first stones. He told that woman to go and sin no more. <clears throat> Look at verse 12 now. Watch this. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. If you following God, you're not walking in darkness. You're not living a life of sin. And that's what the world wants to teach now. That you can live like a dog, do whatever you want to do, and somehow you still saved. But the Bible says, watch this, in verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You're following the Lord, you're not going to live a life of sin. You're not going to live in sin. You got God's spirit in you. God hates sin. Okay, look at Romans. We're going to come back to uh, chapter 8 here. But, but uh, go over to Romans chapter 6. Watch this. Amazing how people try to take the Bible and twist it. And justify wrong. You can't justify wrong. You got to come up to the word, not try to dumb the word down to you. And Jesus told the woman to go and sin no more. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Romans chapter 6 and at verse 1. You got it? All right. Okay, look at what the Bible says now. Romans chapter 6 and at verse 1, and the Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's asking a question here. So we're under grace now. So so we because uh, we're under grace, we can just do whatever we want to do. Now remember, Jesus told the woman to go and sin no more. Okay, now Paul is talking here, Romans chapter 6 and that verse 1, the Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Look what he said. God forbid. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're a Christian. How are you, how are you a Christian living in sin? Because you're not a Christian. That's why. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Watch this. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. That's what baptism represents. You know, you have some uh, uh, people who say, say that baptism is simply a, a public display of faith in Christ. That's, that's, that's not true. Baptism is literally the reenactment of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you are baptized, it, watch, look what he says here, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. Watch this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. 
Baptism represents the, 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 the death of the old man. And, and when we, we rise to walk in the newness of life. For he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. That's what that represents. Mm -hmm. Okay, look now, look at verse 5. And the Bible says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, watch this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth, that henceforth, we should not serve sin. So, now, now remember, Jesus told her, go and sin no more. And, and Paul is coming along here, he's saying that henceforth, we should not serve sin. That we should not serve sin. Look, okay, verse 7, watch this, verse 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead is free from sin. Now I remember when I was a little boy, the saints used to sing that song, Come on and die now. Won't have to die no more. Come on and die now. So I, I didn't understand what they, when I was, uh, they used to kind of scare me sometimes when I was little and they would sing that song. And because I was thinking, oh my goodness, if, if all of them die, who's going to take care of us? <laughs> you know. But no, what they were talking about is go, come on and die away from lying. Die away from stealing. Die away from fornicating. Die away from adultery. As far as you're concerned, you are supposed to be dead to sin. But see, some of us, we, we, we got sin on, 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 on life support. Hmm. You know, we, we, we got sin on life support. Some of that stuff we don't want to let go. But now if you're going to please the Lord, you got to let this stuff go. Okay, go back to uh, St. John chapter 8 now. St. John chapter 8. Amen, amen. Somebody got to tell the people the truth. Okay, St. John chapter 8. All right, and uh, we'll pick it up at verse 31 now. St. John chapter 8 and at verse 31 for the sake of time. I, I would love to just read all the way through this eighth chapter, but uh, I don't want to hold you too long. Okay. Uh, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, maybe uh, we'll, 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 we'll walk through, just walk through the entire chapter one Tuesday night in, in Bible study. You know. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, from uh, St. John chapter 8 and at verse 31. And the Bible says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, watch this. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. If you continue in what well, not not now that, that that if me if is a caveat or a condition, is that right? Mm -hmm. If ye continue in my word, if you continue. No, no, no. If you just pray the sinner's prayer, then are ye my disciples. Y'all see that? See it? Mm -hmm. If you continue, if you pray the sinner's prayer. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. All right, look, look, look now, verse 32. And he said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now he said, over, back over, back up in verse 12. Now, he, look at verse 12 again. Then Jesus spake unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know God, you're going to walk in truth. <clears throat> verse 33, all right? Look at verse 33. And the Bible says, Then answered he him, we, then answered he, answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How says ye shall make us free? See, they didn't have any idea what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. They're comparing carnal things to spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Jesus was talking spiritually. <clears throat> They're comparing fleshly things. And that's why the world have this thing messed up now. They, they're comparing fleshly things to spiritual things. See, see, uh, the, the flesh operates on feelings. 
But you know, but serving God is not based on how you feel. Even, even if you're sick under death, you still have to hold your integrity to God. It doesn't matter how you feel. A commitment, when you're committed to God, when you're sold out to God, it doesn't matter how you feel. And that's but 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 when you operate in the flesh, and that, that's based on how you feel. So that's why somebody can say, Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it, as long as they love each other. Hmm. You know, I don't I don't see why we need to get married. Man, we, we can just shack up because we love each other. Okay, now verse 34. Look at verse 34. And Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Now remember, he just told the woman, Go and sin no more. He meant that. Right. Whosoever committed sin, and remember, we taught you anytime you see it in the Bible, that means continuously, repetitiously. So, 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 I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm very aware, I, and I understand that as long as you're in this body, you are susceptible or you're capable of sin as long as you're in this body. But now, you don't, a child of God don't practice sin. You may slip and fall, but you get up and you dust yourself off. You get up and you repent and get back in the race. You don't stay on the ground. You don't wallow in sin. So now he says here in verse 34, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. All right? And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. The servant don't have the same benefit as the son. Amen. And the Bible says in, in, first, in, in the first chapter of St. John, he came to his own. But his own received him not. But his own received him not. But as many as received him, them gave he power to become the sons of God. You can become a son of God. But you got to receive him. How do we receive God? You got to receive him. You receive him by when you confess faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You receive him when you repent of your sins. That means you acknowledge you're wrong. You apologize for the wrong. And you turn from your wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. You receive him when you're baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You received him when you're filled with the spirit of God. That's how you received him. Okay. Okay. Now uh, he says here. And the servant abided not in the house forever. But the son abided forever. Okay, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be in free indeed. Okay, I know that you are Abraham's seed. Now, I know physically, I know naturally that you are Abraham's seed. According to your natural lineage, I know you came from Abraham. Okay, watch this. But ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. You want to kill me because the word. Okay, I, verse 38, I speak that which I have seen, which I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. See, see, everybody always talking about we are all God's children. No, the devil got some children too. Okay, now he said you're doing that which you do, you've seen with your father. Okay, well, look at verse 39 now. Amen, amen. Verse 39, and the Bible says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto him, If Abraham, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. If you were Abraham's children, you would act like Abraham. You would do the works of Abraham. Abraham feared God. Abraham obeyed the word of God. <clears throat> when God came to Abraham and gave him something to do, the Bible said he moved with fear. Abraham, uh, I remember when God told Abraham to get thee from amongst our kinsmen. <clears throat> Abraham got up and started moving. He didn't question God. Amen. And then my God, he told him, I, I'll show you where you're going, I'll tell you when you get there. 
I remember when God came to Abraham again and told him, I want you to kill Isaac. I want you to sacrifice Isaac. But he didn't question God. He got the boy together. They went on the mount. He fashioned an altar and he tied Isaac to that altar and drew back his knife and would have killed him until the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, do the lad no harm. So, so he says now, he says, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. You would be just like Abraham was. You will believe the word of God. Okay, now watch this. But ye seek to kill me, and verse 40, but ye seek to kill me, a man which has told you the truth. And that's what's going on today. Anybody that come along and stand on the word of God, well, somehow you a bigot. Somehow you full of hate. All I'm doing is saying what the word of God said. But now I'm a bigot. God is love. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. But ye seek to kill me, a man that I've told you the truth, which I heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham didn't do that. When Abraham heard the word, he obeyed the word. He didn't fight the word. But you trying to kill me. And now I'm, I'm a big. Because I'm preaching the word of God. I'm full of hate. But yet somehow you're a Christian. My God, man. Okay, watch this now. Okay, verse uh, verse 41 in the Bible says, Ye do the deeds of your father. The reason you're doing that because you acting like your daddy. You acting like your daddy. Okay, look at verse 41. And, 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 and they said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father. Even God, and that there they go again, comparing things, comparing spiritual things to natural. We have one Father, even God. Okay, look at verse forty, verse forty-two. And Jesus said unto him, If God were your Father, you would love me. See, you all they, they would have knew who they were talking about. They would knew who they were talking to. If God was really their Father, they would knew who they were talking to. If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. If, if, they, knew who, if they knew the word the way they should have known it, they, the prophets talked about this already. What, verse, verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word? How come you don't know what I'm talking about? If you're, if you're really Abraham, see if God is really your father, how, why don't you know what I'm talking about? Because the prophets already told you about this. Isaiah talked about it. Moses talked about it. All the prophets talked about the coming of the Lord. That's the way, and that's the way the world is now. They don't know the word of God. They want to pick and choose a couple of pieces of scripture, not even the whole scripture, and try to make something out of it. To the run to that he that it without sin cast the first stone. It's a whole lot more you need to read after that. <clears throat> Look, verse 44, watch this. Ye are of your father, the devil. That's why you don't know, because you're full of the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil. That's why you support homosexual, uh, that's why you support gay marriage, because you're of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father will ye do. God already spoke about this thing. And if you're a child of God, you're going to line up with the word of God. God already you, God already judged this thing. He judged it and he called it an abomination. And you calling against it because you're full of the devil. Get upset with me if you want. I don't care. Okay, watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He's a liar and the father of it. Okay, verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me now. You don't believe what I'm saying. I'm giving you chapter and verse, but you still don't believe me. Verse 46, watch this. Which of you convinced me of sin? Which one of you convicted me of sin? 
Okay? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Why you don't believe me? Verse 47 is, look, look, look. Verse 47. He that is of God, hear it, God's word. He that is of God, hear it, God's word. Watch this. Ye therefore hear them not because you're not of God. God already spoke on this thing. He that is of God, hear it, God's word. There's no debate. He that is of God, hear it, God's word. Bible said that says. Okay, go to First John, the first epistle of John. First epistle of John. First John, chapter three. Amen. Amen. First John, chapter three. Get ready to let you go. I don't want to hold you too long. First John chapter 3. Okay. And we'll start reading that verse 1. Okay. First John chapter 3 and that verse 1. Okay. Alright. First John chapter 3 and that verse 1. You got it? Alright. And the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. And we remember we looked at first uh, the, the, the first, uh, St. John chapter 1. It said he came to his own and his own received him not. So he says here, therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. But as many as received him, then gave him power to become the sons of God. Okay, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Every man that has this hope in him purified himself is a continual process. Every day you're looking to get a little bit better. You know, you, you want to be a little bit further than you were yesterday. You want to go a little deeper. You want to go a little higher in the things of God. Every man that has this hope purified himself even as he is pure. You're pulling away from this world. Okay, verse, verse, verse uh, 4 now, watch this. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever committed sin. And remember, we gave you a, a, a 50 cent definition of what sin is. Sin is, the, is simply the incorrect response to a desire or a need. The incorrect response to a, a desire or a need. You may have a, 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 a legitimate need. You may be hungry. But that does not give you the right to go steal from nobody. You, you may have a, a desire. You may have a burning desire. But there's still a way to approach. You, you, you have to respond appropriately. 